everybody! It's Rochelle again with another story of the memoirs of the red-headed hairdresser. Okay, so tonight I decided to share with you a story that might take a little bit of time because it's a longer one. Um, and we're going to call this guy Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. And you will find out why in a little bit. Um, so... This one started out where um, I am in a couple of singles groups on Facebook, you know, for social activities for singles people. And um, there was a gentleman that kept inviting me to events, inviting me to all kinds of things. And, you know, for whatever reason, I, I didn't end up making it to any of the events that he was inviting me to. Um, and he'd write me messages like, you know, are you going to come to this? You really should come to this. And I'll be like, I'll try. And then um, one day I had just got done with a photo shoot. And um, I was posting a couple of the pictures that I had received. And um, I was posed next to this motorcycle that had like a skeleton hand on the back of the mirror. And... He responded to it and he said, nice mirrors. And before I could even question him, he wrote me, maybe I should explain that. He said, so I have the same mirrors on my motorcycle. And he sends me a picture of himself standing next to his motorcycle with the exact same mirrors. And I was like, oh, hey, cool. That's awesome. I didn't know you had a motorcycle. And he goes, Oh, so if I would have told you I had a motorcycle, you would have paid attention to me a long time ago? I'm like, I don't know, maybe, but it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> so we chit-chatted a little bit and he ended up asking me out. So um, our first date, we met at the mall. And then we just drove over to this little place near the mall that is this cute little lounge. It's... It does have food, but and they serve drinks, and it's kind of like a 1920s themed place. It's super cool. So we go in there, and we have a drink, and we're chit-chatting and getting to know each other, and we're just really hitting it off. And I'm kind of surprised because this gentleman is 12 years older than me. And if you guys have already figured out, I kind of try to date within six years of my age. Um, and so I wasn't quite sure, but gosh, you know, I was so attracted to him and we had a lot in common and I thought, okay, so yeah, I, I really liked this guy. And he said, you know, um, I'd like to go to, um, this other place. I'd really like the date to not be over. There's this really cool place. How do you feel about a motorcycle ride? I'm like, Great. And he had told me in advance, just in case, bring my riding jacket and my helmet. So I put on my riding jacket and my helmet and he took me to this really cool place. It's, it's kind of tucked away. If you didn't know about it, you would never know it was there. And it's just got this great ambience and they had a live band and the food was amazing. And, um, we just had so much fun and I had the best date. It was so fun and I really liked him. And before the end of the date, he made sure that he was going to get to see me again and set up a second date. And I was really excited. And, um, so our second date, he took me to this, another cool little posh lounge place more near the canyons. And um, we were just having fun and we were chit-chatting with the waitress and we were just really getting along. And he says, you know, this is amazing. He's like, I don't see you with a wandering eye. You're not looking around for a hotter guy or trying to flirt with a waiter or you're actually like paying attention to me. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't I? And he's like, I like that. I really like that. A lot of women usually have like an, a wandering eye and they're always looking for something better. And I'm like, well, you probably just haven't dated very nice girls. He's like, well, you might have a point, but I don't know. He, just, he goes, this is just really refreshing. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying your company. And 
I was super excited about him. It, it was just super fun. And um, then we'd gone on several other dates. I'd met a lot of his friends. Um, then it come to the night of his birthday. And I'd bought like a cupcake. Cause you know, I was, we'd only been dating a short time. So, you know, I didn't have like a grand gift or anything for his birthday, but you know, I was excited to see him and he's like, well, running a little late, a friend of mine has taken me to a soccer game for my birthday. So, you know, maybe give me another, you know, 30 minutes or so We're we're not quite done. And I was like, um, kind of already here. And he's like, oh, oh, okay, well, go ahead and come on up then. And so his one friend is in his apartment with him. And so I, you know, I'm, it's a little awkward, but it's okay. And we're chit chatting and, um, I'm getting nowhere and, and I'm telling him how, so a friend of mine told me that she'd actually been on a date with him. And he was like, oh, her, yeah, she, she was clingy, she was like needy, she was calling all the time. And I'm thinking, well, that doesn't quite sound like her, but okay, whatever. And I'm like, and then I just kind of giggle. And I'm like, yeah, she says if you hurt me that she's going to hurt you. <laughs> and his girlfriend, friend, is there. She looks at me and she goes, well, if you hurt him, I'm going to hurt you. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, point taken. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> and then the conversation just keeps getting awkward. So I'm sitting there and I don't even know how the the topic of food came up. But I just happened to mention that I don't like hot dogs. And they just kind of look at me like, what? Who doesn't like hot dogs? And I'm like, okay, I'll just apologize for my foul language here. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, like, who doesn't love lips and assholes? And I'm laughing because I think I'm so funny. And she looks at me and she goes, his family owns a hot dog company. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. And he goes, no, really, my family owns a hot dog company. And I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, well, he still likes me, so whatever. <laughs> so then um, she leaves and we go out and we have a wonderful evening and we go back and I had, um, I had brought him a cupcake and, um, he'd asked for one of my calendars. So I brought him one of my calendars for his birthday. And, um, that's kind of when we decided that we were going to be a couple was that night. And it was actually the first night that I actually spent the night at his house. And I was just really falling for this guy. Like I really liked him and I just had so much fun with him and we just started going on like, you know, lots of dates and I got to meet all of his friends and we'd gone back to that bar that we'd gone to the, like that lounge, our first date. And I met all of his friends and I met his best friend who, um, He's like, yeah, she's my best friend. She just kind of, she met me when I first got divorced and it was really rough because I didn't want the divorce. And, and I just, I was just sure that nobody was going to want me like at my age being in the single world. And she just totally helped me. And I'm just kind of looking at him like, what? And he's like, she's married. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So. I'm meeting all of his friends. I'm just like, I just fit right in. Everybody seems to really like me. Um, we went out another night and I met another really good friend of his and his, and that guy's girlfriend. And we went karaoke and like he had no idea I could sing. So um, like this other girl that was there, she's so cute. She was like, oh my God, you can sing? What can you sing? And she was so excited. She's like, you're going to sing for us. Okay. You're going to sing for us. You're going to go on stage. I'm like, okay. So of course, one of my favorite songs to karaoke is love is a battlefield from Pat Benatar. And when I got done singing it, he's like, I'm so glad I recorded that performance. He's like, that was amazing. I had no idea you had that kind of a voice. And I was like, hmm. 
<laughs> you know, and I was just, I, it was so much fun. Just we connected on levels and like we'd just lay in bed and we'd have Alexa play different songs that we loved. And he'd say, this one reminds me of you. And I'd be like, this one reminds me of you. And, and we play our favorite songs and like, it was just great. And we got along so well. Then one night, um, I tell him I have a pinup contest that I have to go to. And he goes, oh, well, that's the same night as the pool party at my friend's house. He goes, so why don't I just go to your your pinup thing and then we'll go back to my place and we'll get you all changed and everything. Then we'll go to the pool party. I'm like, okay, great. This will be great. So I tell him. The car show pinup contest is at two o'clock. And I said, it's from two to three. So I, I go to this car show. I'm dressed up in all my pinup gear and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really having fun with it. I'm having a blast and I'm so excited for him to come and see me in my cute outfit and I'm super excited. So, um, I walk around the car show and he's not there and he's not there and he's not there and I'm texting him, where are you? And he's like, oh, oh, I had to help my friend, his best friend. I helped her pick out a boat because she's buying a boat and we're going to have so much fun on her boat this summer. And I'm like, okay, well, you're still coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. I should be there soon. I should be there. And the pinup contest starts. He's not there. And then... I go through and I, you know, answer all the questions and I think that I'm doing so good, but I'm looking around for him because I really wanted him to be there to support me. And as like bright as it's ending, he shows up and I was happy to see him, but I was kind of heartbroken that he missed it. And I'm like, where, where were you? And he goes, I thought you said it was at three. And I said, no, I said it was from two to three. That's, when it ends, like you missed it. And he's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'll make it up to you. And I'm like, okay. You know, and I'm kind of bummed about it, but I'm like, I don't want to be a party pooper. We got this pool party to go to. So we get lunch and then we drive back to his place. And, you know, I get changed into my bikini and my, the dress thing that, you know, you wear over it. And, um, I, I hop on the back of his motorcycle and off we go to this party. I left my car at his place and we went on the motorcycle and we get to this pool party. And I, I mean, I know a lot of the people that are there. I'm having a great time, you know? And so this one gentleman that I've known for a while, he's there and he's telling me about like it was his girlfriend's birthday that day and he did all of these romantic things for her and he kind of told me a little too much information about what they did that morning. <laughs> but whatever, like I'm open-minded, it's fine. And so I'm telling him about it and he's like, why would he tell you all of that? I'm like, I don't, I don't know, he just did. And he's like, started acting really jealous. And I'm like, well, why are you jealous? Like, I'm here with you. I'm not here with him. And he's like, oh. So, I mean, we even went upstairs and did things in the guy's bathroom. We probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> if you catch my meaning. And, like, I am just so just so taken by this guy. I'm just like, gosh, like we're just spontaneous and fun and like being affectionate. We don't care who knows. And then we go back downstairs and his best friend, the married woman is sitting right next to him. Her husband's not there. He's going to be there later. Right? 
So we're sitting around this table and this other really pretty blonde girl comes up and she's like, oh, hey, and she's being like obviously over the top flirty. And I'm like, you do see me sitting here holding his hand, right? And she just keeps going like she doesn't even care that I'm holding his hand, that we're obviously together. I mean, I guess his other friend was sitting pretty damn close to him too. So she probably just, whatever. But then she starts talking about his parties and how much fun they are. And oh, that last cuddle party was so much fun till he kicked us all out. Like, what the hell is going on here? What is she talking about? And then um, our friends from the karaoke night, they show up. And I'm just kind of looking at him all annoyed about, what was that about? And he's like, oh, we'll talk about it later. And I'm like, all right. And so we're chit-chatting with our other friends from the karaoke night and his best friend that was still with us. And, well, have you guys tried the jungle juice? Oh, you've got to try the jungle juice. The jungle juice is so good. So we have a couple glasses of this jungle juice. And I'm like, you know, we need to stop. We're on a motorcycle. At some point, you need to get me back to my car, to your house, you know. And he's like, and then his friend that was there that was from the karaoke night, he goes, oh, you know what? We got to go to this little meeting, but then we'll come back. He goes, if you guys have had too much to drink, we'll drive you home. It's no big deal. Like, we'll just go ahead and come back. We'll for sure drive you home. Don't worry about it. So he's like, well, we have a ride home, so it doesn't matter now. So have another glass of, of jungle juice. And I'm usually not much of a drinker. I'll have, you know, a couple of cocktails. I have my rule. I don't drink constantly. I have to drink water in between my drinks. And I usually only have like three max. But this night was not the case. So we both had several glasses of this jungle juice and I don't know what was in it, but man, it was strong, but you could not taste it. So next thing you know, his best friend suggests we all go get in the hot tub. Yay. And well, if any of you know, like that intensifies the alcohol that's in your system. So we're in the hot tub for a little bit and she points out to me that the DJ hasn't played my song. So you should get out and make sure you go re re go request your song again. So I get out of the hot tub and I walk around the pool and I go tell the DJ, hey, like, when are you going to play my song? And he's like, oh, I've got a few more before yours, but it's still on my list. It's on my list. And as I'm walking back to the hot tub, a friend of mine who's on the dance floor dancing, she grabs me. So I dance with her for a song because I'm super social like that. So we're dancing and then I go walking back to the hot tub and I go to like give him a hug and he grabs both of my arms like this and he's like, no. And I'm like, what? And he's like, no, we are not doing this. We are not doing this. And I'm like, doing what? And he goes, we all saw that. We all saw that guy with his hands all over you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? A gentleman said hi to me on the dance floor. No one touched me. And honestly... If I was intoxicated enough to not remember it, like I would have been in serious trouble, right? But I'm sitting there like dumbfounded, like, what are you talking about? Nobody touched me. And he's like, you know what? We're done. We're done. I'm not doing this with you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, we're done. I'm like, my stuff is at your house. My purse, my car keys, everything's at your house. Like, what do you expect me to do? And he goes, fine, I'll take you. Let's go. And I'm like, we're leaving? Like, I know for a fact that if it was me driving, there's no way I could have driven. But I am sobbing at this point. I am bawling and he is screaming at me. And I have no idea why he's mad at me. I have no idea. <laughs> okay? So... How I made it to his apartment without falling off the back of that motorcycle, I will, I will never know. And he kept getting lost. And I can honestly say, I am pretty sure I was in and out of consciousness on the back of that motorcycle. And I look back at it now like that was terrifying. 
So we get to his apartment complex and he gets off the motorcycle and I go to get off and I lose my footing and I fall. And he's like, are you freaking kidding me? And I'm like, what is wrong? What did I do? And he's like, he's like, no, uh uh. And he starts walking towards his apartment and leaves me just kind of fallen on the ground. Didn't even try to help me up. He just walks off and I'm like, wait a second. And I'm like, I get up and I kind of go and go after him, you know, he's like, oh yeah, now you can walk. I'm like, what is with this anger? I didn't do anything. And he's like, no, uh, -uh. and he's super mad at me and I don't know what happened. So I, I'm going up the stairs to his apartment and I thought he was right behind me and I get to the door and I hear his motorcycle start and I turn around. He's not behind me. I don't have the keys to get in his apartment. What am I supposed to do? I can't leave my purse and my keys are inside his house and my overnight bag because I was planning on spending the night. And so I don't know what to do. So I just sit down in the threshold of his door. And I honestly do not know how long I was there. I honestly don't know how long he was gone. And then he comes back and I'm literally like asleep on his doorstep. And he's like, are you freaking kidding me? And he wakes me up and he's like, you need to leave. And I'm like, my stuff's inside. What am I supposed to do? So he unlocks the door and I step into the inside of his apartment and I am super dizzy. I'm like holding onto the walls and he, he just kind of like grabs my purse and my overnight bag and he just kind of like drops it like right there next to me. And he's like, get out. And I'm like, I can't drive like this. And he goes, I do not care. Get out. And I'm like, okay. And I grab my stuff and I walk to my car and there's no way I can drive. So I literally just went to sleep in my car. And I was in sleep in my car for a couple of hours. Um, and when I woke up, there, there was a white truck parked so close to my car. There's no way that driver wouldn't have hit my car. So I'm like, how in the hell? But whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to go see if it's someone else in his apartment. Like if he's going to treat me like that, I'm just leaving. So I called my mom and I am just bawling my eyes out. And I went and grabbed a coffee and a water and my mom stayed on the phone with me the whole time as I just bawled. I just bawled. And, um, I was supposed to be, um, going to her house anyway the next day because at this point like my son was still young enough that he I took him to her house so he was up there so I drove to my mom's house she stayed on the phone with me the whole time and I was just bawling I'm like I have no idea what I did wrong I have no idea why he's mad at me I know I didn't do anything I honestly don't know why he's mad at me I do not know what happened and the next day I texted him I'm like can you at least tell me why? And he didn't answer me. So I called another one of my friends that was at the party. And I'm like, hey, girl, did you see me do anything inappropriate? Did you see anything happen like on the dance floor or anything? And she goes, no, you didn't do anything. And I'm like, he's accusing me of letting a guy basically grope me on the dance floor. She goes, I never saw you dance with a guy. You danced with a girl for a minute, but I never saw you dance with a guy. And I'm like, that's what I thought. I danced with a girl for a minute and that was it. And I'm like, she goes, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. And she goes, I actually felt really bad for you. She goes, I'd never seen you in so much pain. She goes, that was sad. She goes, he's not, he's not a very good guy. I hate to tell you. She's like, I just... He, he leads a different lifestyle and I think that he shouldn't put good, good hearted girls like you in that situation. Like, I don't think he's even really serious about a relationship. And I'm like, 
Well, now I know. So eventually, like he did tell me that maybe someday he'll be able to forgive me for what I've done. But for now, he he doesn't want to have anything to do with me. And he will return the coffee maker I bought him, but he has a selfish request to keep my calendar. I'm like, keep them both. I don't care. And you think that'd be the end of this story, but it's not. So that October, I go to a Halloween party and his best friend, remember his best friend? Yeah, she was at that party and I tried to get out of there before she saw me, but no, her husband saw me, grabs me. He's like, hey, beautiful, how are you? We've missed you, how are you? And pulls me over to her, look who I found. And she's like, oh, hi. And she's like, you know what? Screw him. Screw him. He's an effing narcissist. He is such a narcissist. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And she goes, you know, that night that he broke up with you, you didn't do anything wrong. She's like, you didn't do anything wrong. He made up that story before we ever got to that party. Really? He staged the whole thing. Okay. Then why? Right? Why? Why do that to me? You want out of the relationship? Just break up with me. Just say it's not working. I honestly could not figure it out till like, I want to say a month or two after the Halloween party. She pops up on my Facebook. She's divorced. And guess who her new boyfriend is? Yep. Wolf in sheep's clothing. See you next time.